All right. Thank you, ladies. I'm going to um, invite Sally to come up. We're going to go ahead and uh, begin to just worship the Lord. If you're still ministering to Becky, go right ahead. We're going to just enter into worship because when we worship, it brings the presence. comfortable worshiping just lay out run around whatever you want to do because it's just you and God as I come into your presence past the gates of praise to your sanctuary till we're standing face to face the fullness of your grace. I can only bow down and say, you are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are Take me past the outer courts to the holy place. Past 
just the brazen altar Lord, I want to see your face Take me by the crowds of people Priests to sing your praise I hunger and thirst for your righteousness But it's only found one place Take me into the holy of holies Take me in by the blood of the Lamb Take me past the outer courts Through the holy place Past the brazen altar Lord, I want to see your face Pass me by the crowds of people Priests to sing your praise I hunger and thirst for your righteousness But it's only found one place Take me into the holy of holies Take me in by the blood of the Lamb Take me into the holy of holies Take the cold my lips, here I am. Take the cold, cleanse my lips, here I am. Can you turn the pad down in my ears? to hurt you. No, I don't want to move. You are my sanctuary, my upper room. So I linger here with you. Push through the fear of silence Till time has been removed Cause you are my sanctuary My upper room So I linger here
there's more you want to Push through the fear of silence Till time has been removed You are my sanctuary My upper room So I'll linger here with you Present in this moment, there's more you want to do. You are my sanctuary, my upper room, so I'll linger here with you.
So, ladies, I'm going to ask you to look in your bag, and uh, there should be a blue piece of paper in there, and this is the encounter that we did earlier, and so we're going to take about the next 20, 25 minutes and just invite you to do this for yourself, and then in about 10 minutes, Jimmy's going to turn on uh, Wendy Backland, and we're going to have an encounter with her. And then we want to invite you to write down anything the Lord speaks to you, and we're going to have a testimony time, because you remember, nothing is too big or too small. And so it could be a word, could be an impression, could be anything. And what we want you to do is get into the habit of doing this at home. When you get in the car, uh, sometimes you're going to laugh, but I do it when I get in the bathtub. I turn the lights down low, get in the bathtub, and just say, Holy Spirit, you're welcome. And I get some great downloads in the bathtub. So, um, because it's all about just getting quiet and learning to hear learning to listen, and learning to be in relationship with him. And so if you want to spread out, you can. If you want to go sit somewhere, you can. If you want a blanket, you can come up and get one. And um, so, Jimmy, go ahead and turn the music on, and I will talk to you in about 20 minutes.
parts of your body. There's angelic activity over you. Even while you just rest. So ladies, isn't this a little refreshing? We were just discussing how foreign this might feel to us just to sit in his presence and rest because we're just so used to being busy. And I know this is a stretch for some of us because we don't do this on a regular. So one of the challenges that you're gonna have is to put this into practice Maybe not on a daily, you know, we understand life is busy, but uh, it, at least regularly, okay? This is something that we need to incorporate into our worship time, into just our intimacy time with him. A lot of times when we're reading the scriptures, we think that's the intimate time, and that's really not. It can be, but a lot of times that's just information and uh, the word going in, and that's uh, life, you know, the Word of God is alive and active. It's sharper than a double-edged sword. It pierces bone and marrow. It actually judges the thoughts and intentions of the heart. So it's not my job to judge. It's the Word of God's job to judge. So that's a lot of uh, our intimate time with the Lord is the Word. But sometimes it's just sitting in His presence. Sometimes it's just like, you know, that, I don't know if you noticed, there was like one note that just went forever. And I was like, Wow. But you can just sit in one note. Can you imagine the sound of heaven? Like that stretched me today. The sound of heaven it could be just one note. And it just goes on and on and on. But that's where we can find his presence. We wanted to take just a few minutes. I know we had a wonderful ministry time earlier. And we wanted to take a few minutes for some testimony time. Because, you know, when God does something, uh, the first thing that we need to do is testify about it. And so we wanted to take a moment or a few minutes or an hour or however long, however long it takes to testify. So if the Lord did something in you over the last night, this morning, uh, I really want you just to come forward and it's testimony time, okay? 
I don't know about you, but I've got a lot of refreshment. I've got a lot of restoration. I know someone said that a testimony of being restored, and that was a word that was spoken over them. And then uh, Christy's going to uh, share a little bit with us, and then she's going to pray for whoever wants prayer. But um, the, as far as the teaching time, we're done. Christy brought it. We all agreed. There's not anything else that needs to be said. There's really not. Uh, you know. You know a lot of the word. It's just putting it into practice, and that's what we need to do. We just, we just need to be good stewards of the word. And I love what Christy said. Uh, he gives us things to steward. And when you said the house, and if, it, if, it, if you own it, then it's hard to give it up. But you're just to steward it. You're to steward the things that he gives you. And to steward his presence is one of those things. And steward the words that he's given you is another. And then stewarding the healing that he's given you is another. So... Who's going to be our first testimony? Okay, Miss Ann. Well, last night and when today during this exercise, um, the Lord spoke to me just something real simple that he said was something that I really appreciate, and that is don't worry about anything whatsoever. How many are going to receive that one? <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you, Miss Ann. Um, okay, so a lot of y'all heard the word that Christy said over me. And what you don't know is that the Lord told me I was going to get sick before I got sick. And I didn't know if it was him when I would ask my friends, do you think the Lord would tell me that? And then about a week before I got diagnosed, I had a dream where a chunk of my hair came out, which I normally have long hair. This is my after chemo hair. But he also said that when you're sick, during that time, I'm gonna give you stuff and you're gonna write a book and it's gonna help a lot of people. And then I'll restore you. So not only did she say it, somebody else said it that prayed for me and so the lord is just confirming and confirming and confirming and i do know that i will walk out of this and you know do some stuff for the kingdom amen amen thank you misty thank you wow that's awesome anybody else have a word of testimony How's it going? Good. Why, does I, why do I sound fuzzy when I'm holding this? Oh, no. Oh, okay. You sound pretty normal. Though. Really? Yeah. <laughs> it sounds all fuzzy to me. Maybe my hearing is getting bad. No, in Jesus' name. No, it's not. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm just joking. Uh, this morning, this is what I got. And I don't know if you can see it, but it says, don't quit. Right? So... Uh, I asked a loaded question about discipleship last night because I'm in the middle of writing a book about discipleship. And so one of the people that I read a lot of, uh, that I th and I don't listen to him, I read his sermons, is John Piper. And John Piper says, discipleship exists so that we don't quit, really. That's like, you know, so why are there small groups at church? Because of discipleship, you know, so we don't quit. And he, he takes out of the Hebrews, you know, the fellowship of the saints, and we don't neglect meeting together yeah. and that, you know. And why is there marriage so we don't quit? Why, you know, just everything you think about in a church, why do we do that so we don't quit, right? So why do we do things like this so we don't quit? So we're to encourage one another. I need to turn this way. We're going to encourage one another. And so the Lord was just you know, reminding me, you know, don't quit. Like, I'm almost done. Don't quit. Like, I almost quit college because I was sick of it. But I didn't quit. Like, I was three weeks away, and I was like, I'm done with this. And people were like, don't quit. Don't quit. Like, so they were like, be in church, right? So, and then just now, okay, the one note thing, I noticed 
And then I was like, okay, I got to start writing stuff down because I got to stop listening to the one note. Because I was like, okay. I know it's really good, but man. I'm just being honest, okay? So this is what the Lord, this is what, this is what I felt like I heard. Silence is not your kryptonite. It's your war room. Okay, so then I made a list. In silence, I slow down, I rest, I catnap. I'm just confessing, y'all. I did a little catnap, okay. I, it's probably not super spiritual, but I think it was. Um, I focus, I listen so I can hear the tiny whisper. I strategize, I receive, I stay still, I remember, I dream, I battle, mostly with myself, align with God, I find peace. I get to grow my faith. I get to finish my thoughts, which is something I don't, I usually go the next thing before I finish thinking about things. Um, this is what came to me, quell distraction. And I cannot tell you how much I had to resist grabbing my phone and what's the definition of quell because that is not a word that I ever use. So I think it means silent, but I'm not sure because I didn't touch my phone, okay? It does mean silent, okay, quell distraction. And then um, practice discipline and self-control when I didn't touch my phone. Okay, anyway. Um, but then the other thing I need to add is that I keep my mouth shut. So, because a lot of times I just want to answer. I'm a, I didn't think, I never thought I was a fixer. But I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm the worst kind of fixer. I'm the fixer who doesn't think that she's a fixer. So that's, that's the worst. But anyway, um, so I have to keep my mouth shut that's so but this has been super refreshing and i told debbie earlier my husband gave a distress call phone, phone call earlier because because of that's what happens and of course my mother-in-law's washing machine couldn't be fixed and he's like i need you to come home and i'm like why he goes you got to go find her a whirlpool and i was like uh hang on a second there are two at lowe's why don't you take her like can you do that <laughs> so anyway yay heath i got to stay anyway i got to sit still but man, this has been a uh, really good exercise. Good exercise. Better than weightlifting. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mary. Yes. Thank you so much. That is awesome. It is difficult to be still. It is. There you go. How many of you like the second note better than the first note? I did. Yeah. Thank you, Jimmy. <laughs> Anybody else? Colette. And yes, I had a very hard time focusing on anything other than the note as well. But the Lord gave me a little poem, which I'm not a poet. That's Jamie, wherever she is. But he said, like the waves of an ocean beating in, she will rise and she will win. She is the bride now dressed in white. The Lord is pleased at her sight. He takes her hand and leads her home. She bows to him, then away they go. Wow, you are a poet. <laughs> wow, thank you, Colette. That's awesome. Beautiful word. Anybody else? Testimony of healing. A word of encouragement. So I'm going to sit because my Bible's heavy. Um, like Christy said last night, I prayed at the beginning of the year to get my word for the year. What I'm supposed to um, just kind of ruminate on and then what scripture goes with it. So my word for the year is weakness. Um, anyone in here who goes to our church knows I've been battling some a physical ailment for two years now. It's nicknamed, I'm not owning this, this was not my nickname for it, but it is nicknamed the suicide disease because it's so painful. Um, and like Paul with his thorn in the flesh, I've been begging God to take it away, take it away, take it away. 
So he told me, your word for this year is weakness. And your scripture is in 2 Corinthians 12. It's verses 9 and 10. My grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in the insults, hardships, persecutions, and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Last night, as Christy was talking, oh, and as far as the notes go, there were notes. I was so far gone, I didn't even hear them. <laughs> okay. Um, but last night, what God gave me, and these are statements people have made to me over and over and over again, my whole life, but mainly in the last two years. It's, so here's what I wrote. The world will say, that which doesn't kill you makes you stronger. But we live in God's kingdom where we become weak so he can be strong. Many in the church will say, God will never give you more than you can handle. Again, we live in God's kingdom. If we can handle everything, we wouldn't need him. Thus, God will never give us more than he can handle. For when I am weak, then he is strong. That's awesome. Thank you. Anybody else? Word of testimony? Um, I've had several personal encounters um, today. I almost said this week, <laughs> but it feels like a week, but today. Um, I'm grateful for because, you know, I'm one feel like I'm in the wilderness. You know, everyone else is in town at the party, and I want to go to the party, but the Lord has me in the wilderness right now. So I'm grateful for everything that he showed me today. But the one I want to share is when I was laying up here um, prostrate before the Lord, um, I just envisioned myself with my head was in his lap. And I began to smell smoke. And I was like, why am I smelling smoke? He's like, that's the smell of purification. And he goes, that's the, that's the aroma of holiness. That's the aroma that's coming from my burning ones. So this is for the church, ladies. Awesome. Wow. Miss Diane. Oh, um. I wanted to share that <clears throat> this conference yesterday, what it's done for me. Mm. Just preparing to come was such a struggle. This is my church. This is my home. But preparing to minister was a struggle only because I felt like I'm done. I've wanted to quit so many times. And every time I get, gather my garments to give away, God says, put them back. So I said, okay, I, I'm home now. I'm at a church. I can dance during praise and worship, and I'm good. I'm, like, really good. I don't want to do all the other stuff the solo stuff. I don't want to do that. I'll teach or whatever. So as I prepared this last few weeks, it was just a struggle. But when I got here last night, the freedom and fabulous, fearless, and free, the, the best part for me is the free. Because I felt so bound. I, I, and I tried to practice I tried to do all this stuff, and I couldn't. I, and I could just hear God say, rest in me, rest in me. You know, and, I mean, after you get over 50, you, you know, you kind of be like, okay, let the, little, let the little kids do all, let the young ones do this. But coming here this weekend has refreshed me. All of your encouragement, all of your love that you've poured out on me, it's so refreshing and it's so confirmation that God is not done with me yet. And the aches and pains that I have or had in my body that made me want to quit, I healed. Amen. 
So that's that's what I got out of this conference this weekend. Just a little bit. Uh -huh. <laughs> She's not 50. She's 20. <laughs> She's 53. She dances like she's 12, doesn't she? Mm-hmm, literally. So you have a generation to teach. So you can't quit. Mm -hmm. You can't quit. Mm. How many of you are blessed? There's healing in this dance. My favorite was the one she did at your house. No, it was... Sharita's house, uh, the cross. I don't know if you ever have that in you again. It's powerful. You got that in you today? You got it with you? Okay, why don't you run up there and see if they can get whatever you need. Okay, we're thinking. So uh, it was on the crucifixion. Uh, yeah, it, it's one of the most powerful things I've ever seen in my life. Like it brings you to your knees. And I don't know, if, if the Lord just brings it back, uh, she'll do it. Anybody else have a testimony of what the Lord did? Come on, Diane. I was going to wait till I went to the doctor and get checked out because I'm going this week. But I got prayed for, and in faith, I'm just, I'm believing that I was healed. I am healed. He's the healer. Yeah. Uh, I had a, uh, I had a, an MRI done a couple of weeks ago, and then they called me. And it was of my brain. And the, the, the nurse practitioner said, oh, the brain looks pretty good. You know, you are not don't have signs of aging or anything like that. But she told me there's, a, there's a, something on the bottom in your pituitary, and they can't, they don't know what it is. And so then I just thought, oh, boy. <laughs> so I went in and this week, and they called the, uh, what's that, where they do your, they checked the pituitary, the thyroid, those endocrine, endocrine specialists called and said, we need to go ahead and look at it and we'll tell you the results when you come in. And so I, that was kind of fear or just not knowing. And that's for me the hardest thing. I said, why don't you just go ahead and tell me what it is so I can prepare for it. <laughs> and of course they don't do that because she was an assistant. And so today when we had prayer, I thought, you know what? God can take care of this. And I believe in healing. I've seen people healed. And I, I just, I don't know what it is, but I know there's something there. And I know God's taking care of it. And um, when Christy prayed for me, I have been prayed for a lot different times in my life and have never felt like I was, I just relaxed like that. It wasn't like I fell over. My body just relaxed. And so there was something, something broke in me at that time. And then I felt warm. And so I know God's presence was on me. And so I'm just, and I felt like I needed to go ahead and testify to yes. that. Because yes. if I doubt him, then I'm going to be, I'm not going to be in the best shape. So it's just better for me to go ahead and release that and let it go. So thank you. Yes. Thank y'all. Yes. Right. Amen. Amen. We are. That's the faith walking out your healing have another sweet little friend that's walking out her healing in Jesus' name. Melissa, stand up. Look at this girl. Yes. Practicing her healing. Amen. Amen. Anybody else have a word? Miss Reggie. Uh, you asked us to um, ask God last night a question yes. and to listen and you know sometimes when you ask um, you start thinking um, this and that and you think well 
is that coming from you or is that coming from me or what's that coming from? Well, what he, the word he's been giving me, I'm sorry, I'm a crier, is enough. Yeah. Because I asked him why he took my husband away a year ago. And I think he was telling me, or he's told me, that um, my husband had, had enough pain. Uh, all the medical stuff he was going through. And then now that he's gone, God has been enough. Thank you, Lord. He's enough. He is enough. Yes. He is enough. So you asked him the question why, and he said, I am enough. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. Could y'all just extend your hand to Reggie? This season of life, this change, this sudden redirection is not easy. So we want to just come alongside you, Reggie, and Miss Carol, those who have lost their husbands, lost a loved one. This season is not easy. And we recognize the pain and the ups and the downs. And one day we feel good and the next day we're just like in despair. So God, I thank you for the word that Reggie heard that she, when she asked you the question, why? You simply said, I'm enough. God, that's true for each and every one of us. We do not know the moment that we will take our last breath, but you do. And your word says that worrying about that time will not give one moment longer or cut it one moment short. That you know the exact time. That's beyond our comprehension. But God, we trust you. We trust that you are in control. You know best. And your plan is good, and it is perfect. But I thank you that Reggie has chosen by faith to continue the journey of healing in her heart. And she's continued to hold you close. And I thank you that you spoke so clearly to her that you are enough. And in those moments where she feels down or she's lonely, Holy Spirit, you are the great comforter. You are the comfort that we need. Thank you for speaking to her. Thank you for her life. Thank you that she has so much more to give. And so much more love to receive and give. We bless her today in Jesus' name. Amen. Any other testimony or word? I'm trying to do the same thing. I think that Melissa's believing God for her healing. And I realize it's not about me. Um, but I think it was you that said today up there, because you get so used to the pain that you deal with, you become friends with it. Well, I want to, like, divorce it, so. <laughs> that, <laughs> um, and even though the pain is there, God has made a way for me to just continue on, and I just praise him for that, because what else can we do, you know? So I, I thank him. Thank you, Lori. Thank you. Anybody else have a word? Miss Susan. Well, last night when I was trying to go to sleep, um, and I struggle with this every night, and so does my mother and so does my daughter, and I was just uh, asking, I was like, Lord, why can't I go to sleep? I'm tired. And it got, it was just, you know, nothing came immediately, then all of a sudden it was like prepared. And I thought, for what? 
but I don't think I'm preparing myself for sleep. I think I just like turn the TV off and go to bed and then I can't, then I toss and turn and don't want to get up, bother anybody. And so I'm going to have to change how I do things, I think. So, and then along with that has also come purpose. And I don't really know what, what that means, but that word keeps, it was like they kept getting flipped around in my mind. So the purpose, I guess, of my sleep is to uh, give me rest. But both prepare and purpose are the words. Anybody else struggle with going to sleep? So that might be a word for us, that we have to do some things to prepare ourselves for sleep and ask the Holy Spirit what that is. It might be different for each of us. Okay, we have one in the back. Thank you. Okay, help me. I really struggled to get here today. I started trying to get prepared to get here at 6 o'clock this morning. I think I made it at 12.30. I didn't get a word but before. But I've had no vision. Every time I think about wanting to do something or what, what's left, I get a blank page. It's just white. Just, and I don't know. I do feel better. But when I close my eyes, I begin to see color. So I don't know what the vision is. But I'm going to believe, and I'm believing that God's given me the vision, and it's not, no, we're not done. So Becky's been struggling with pain all over her body, and some of it's, she has some idea from doctors diagnosis but some of it's unexplainable and this is a house of healing and we're coming into agreement with you that your healing is here so I want you to extend your hand to Becky we had some ladies that surrounded her and prayed for her the color that's coming back into your mind and then when you close your eyes and you see color I want you to see that go into every part of your body starting at your head it's coming down your neck it's coming to your shoulders coming down your arms it's coming down your back and your abdomen all at the same time it's just rushing down it's coming down to your hips your pelvic your legs your thighs your joints every joint down to your knees, down to your calf muscles, down to your ankles, down to your heel, down to every toe, every ligament, every toe. You're seeing the color of healing throughout your whole body. This too is going to be unexplainable because it's only from Him. And just as the pain is unexplainable, your healing, likewise, in the world's eyes, we won't know how it happened, but He does. So God, thank you 
Thank you for Becky's healing. Thank you that every pain is being pushed out by this color that you vision you gave her. It's from you. And it's pushed out everything else that's not of you. We come into agreement with her. In Jesus' name, amen. Anybody else? I just wanted to say that um, when the first Lord first started ministering to me with um, showing me things, that's how he did it with color. And I still see color a lot when I close my eyes, when he's not showing me pictures of things. And that's how I know he's right there. Like his manifest presence is there, that he has stepped into the room and he's there because I can see all these colors dancing around and so just be encouraged in that, that that's how close he is to you. And that's how dear you are to him, that he's right there with you, on you, in you. And I just pray that he continues to shower you with his love. <laughs> yeah. Um, so... This weekend is just what I needed. Um, I feel so just re refreshed and just replenished um, by his spirit. It's been amazing. Um, I will say that um, earlier, whenever, um, after we kind of were, you know, there, Christy was ministering and all that, and I, could, I just felt the need to hit my knees at the altar on behalf of my daughters. I have two adult children who are not walking with the Lord yet. Um, one is a prodigal and one is not saved. Um, I just found that out. My oldest is not saved yet, but I just felt like I just needed to just stand in the gap and intercede in re repentance for them. Just, and, um, <laughs> as soon as I did, Christy walked up and she just, <laughs> she said, your daughters. <laughs> it's just like the Lord's like, I hear you, you know, and I'm, and I'm moving yeah. in them and, um, and something's happening with Alyssa right now, she's, something stirring in her, um, the Holy Spirit to doing a work. So I just asked God to pray for, for my daughter, Alyssa Kate, um, that she would come back. Um, she wants to hear my testimony. So pray for me on that too, because it's, it's a good one. <laughs> and so, you know, <laughs> she would have some grace, but I'm just, I'm so encouraged. And so I just thank you all very much. So Haley is the other daughter, and so let's remember to pray for them. Prodigals, come home. Mm -hmm. So I will give a, a little word of testimony for those of you who knew my son was gone for 25 years, removed, you know, in, from relationship with us, and he would come home, you know, once a year, and we would talk occasionally and text occasionally, and so I heard this message by Karen Henderson, I can't remember exactly. Anyway, and it was on the prodigal. And she said that when her daughter, I want to say her name was Julie, she was raised in a Christian home, and just like my son was, and she married a pastor, and she had children, and then she just kind of like went off and did her own thing. And so she said like she would roll her window down, or she would go outside, and she would just scream out, and this is I'm telling you, start doing it. Because I started doing that after I heard her testimony. And wherever I was, I, like if I was driving, I'd just roll my windows down and go, Bailey, come home! And I'm telling you, in two days, he called me and said, Hey, Mom, I want to come home. Yeah. Now, he meant physically. He wanted to come see me. Like, What? I want to come home. And it just like blew me away. So I just kept doing it like, man, this is awesome. <laughs> and so that was in February, the beginning of February. And 
I said, well, you might want to see if your uncle can come too. Like, why don't you come when he can come and see you as well? And that was on his birthday. So he came home on February 25th. The first time we have gotten to celebrate his birthday on his birthday in 25 years. And then March 15th. May 15th, he came for Cade's graduation from college and was the day that I got an apology for being gone for 25 years and a restoration moment with my son (laughs) who married, he said, he claims, I married my mom. (laughs) He said, Mom, Aaron's faith is just like yours. Well, hallelujah. (laughs) So after 25 years of running away from the Lord, he has returned to the Lord and married a beautiful Christian girl who is like man, a powerhouse. So the prodigal's coming home. But it started with my faith of just screaming out their names and just commanding in the spirit. Oh, yeah. You scream their name. Come home. Prodigals are returning. This is time. It's time. It's time. Christy, do you have a verse that you would like to share with us? This is our... memory um, and my memory is serving me correctly not if it is <laughs> I'm thinking about you Donna and when we were at Anissa remember and your son wasn't saved not yet and we called his name out and called him into the kingdom Debbie is right. It's time for the prodigals. Yeah. So call your children's name out. Go in their rooms and put oil on stuff. (laughs) Call them on in. What an awesome testimony. I want to say this before I read the scripture. I heard the word. Contend for the continuation. Everything that the Lord has deposited in us, we need to contend for the continuation. For the continuation of intimacy. For the continuation of the words that he's been speaking to you. For the continuation of his promise. For the continuation of those healings. And I'm sorry, I don't remember. Is it Becky? Because when she was praying for you, Debbie, I saw God moving into your cells. Healing in your cells. And so as things are happening to your cells, we just know that wellness and wholeness is taking place. So the scripture that I wanted to share, and I'm so glad that we are so in agreement because I just felt like I don't have Holy Spirit that's just done it all. Thank you, Lord. But the scripture, God gave me this right before I moved, and I feel like it's for some of you in here, if not all. But it is from Isaiah 62. And it's verses 1 through 5. He gave me all of it, but I'm just going to read those. It says, for Zion's sake, I will not hold my peace. We are Zion. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her righteousness goes forth as brightness and her salvation as a lamp that burns. The Gentiles shall see your righteousness 
and all kings your glory. You shall be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord will name. And I truly believe that even on today, that there's a new name, that we really are the bride of Christ and names that we wore before are no longer attached to us because the, na the name of the Lord is upon us. Verse 3 says, You shall also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. Listen to this. You shall no longer be termed forsaken, nor shall your land anymore be termed desolate. Wow. If you've been feeling forsaken, if the enemy been putting that term on you, he says you shall no longer be termed that forsaken. Your land shall not be termed or named desolate anymore. But you shall be called Hephzibah. Hephzibah was the wife of King Hezekiah, King Hezekiah. And her name means the Lord delights in her. Oh, I love that. And your land shall be called Beulah, which means married. For the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a virgin, so shall your sons marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. And so this weekend, embracing his intimacy, I believe new garments were given. I believe new names were given. I believe the term forsaken was destroyed that desolation was destroyed and that we are his bridegroom and purification really has taken place and we're going to rise up as his bride and we're going to go forth. If I may pray, is that okay? God highlighted a, a couple and it's not going to be long. But Tamara, Yes, and Diane, come, please. Some oil. Anyone? Just because this, this grace. When I see you, I see this grace, and I always hear the word gazelle. Gazelle. He has made your feet like hind's feet. And he has gifted you, and there's so much more. And all I'm going to do is just lay my hand on your head, but Diane... Lord God, we thank you for our sister right now. We thank you for the anointing that you have placed upon her life, God. God, we thank you that she carries it well. We thank you that she doesn't take it for granted, but that it's in her. And it just oozes, it oozes out as she worships. Lord, now God, I ask you, God, that you would fill her even the more. God, the prophetic that's down in her, God. Ask that you would just teach her how to open up and flow in the anointing, God, that you have given and that you have placed upon her life. And we thank you now, God, for your obedient servant. We thank you for her life that's hid in you through Christ Jesus. She is an example 
and that she walks worthy of the cause, God. Thank you that there is no jealous spirit that is up on her, that she is free. Jesus, she's loving. And what you've given her, she wants to give. Yes. Not only back to you, God, but to other people. We thank you for her influence. Oh, God. Strengthen her for the call. Make her bold, even bolder. Let her eyes be closed to anything that wants to come up against her. Let her not be worried about the naysayers. But let her walk in humility and with boldness for the call that you have given her. Because God is from you. From birth. Thank you, God. We love you, Jesus. And I just hear the Lord saying that the gift is being stirred even the more. I hear breakers anointing is upon you. Breakers anointing. Even in her quietness, breakers, anointing. Thank you, Jesus. Colette. (laughs) Girl, you better come on. (laughs) She's in the presence. Great grace. Mm -hmm. Mother of Zion. Mother of many. Mother of nations. I see nations in your belly. Mm -hmm. Watch how he opens up even more of the realm of the spirit for you to pray for nations. Not just an intercessor, but a glory carrier of nations. Someone's behind you. So, Father, I thank you for this vessel. I thank you for the anointing of your power. I thank you for her calling, her grace, her function. I too thank you for the prophetic. I thank you, Lord God, that you're stirring her even the more. Dreams, visions in a greater measure. Show her, Father, your mysteries and the revelations. Father God, that you would have her to pray and release God into the kingdom. We bless you for her and for her family. I hear the word enlargement. And I hear the word capacity. He's enlarging your capacity. What he's graced you to carry in this hour. And Lord, we thank you. And we seal it. We say it is sealed by the blood of Yeshua. In the name of Jesus. Come here with me, friend. This is my friend. Don't tell them. Tell them your name. They know. Abby. Abby. This baby's so anointed. And Abby, 
I just love you. This is my girl. This is one of my girls. I tell Kaylee, the kids love me. What I love is talking to her parents. And what I love, what they're doing with her, is they're letting God be God in her life. There's no junior Holy Spirit. She's so anointed and so bold for Jesus. <laughs> I got her to stand up here because I believe she's representing what God is doing. We cannot deny that God is able to use these sweet babies and the purity of who they are. So don't shrink or say scoot if you see them coming and they're laying hands on you at the altar. Because one of the most beautiful scenes that I have ever seen was the, the other week. <laughs> When people was at this altar and my daughter was one and I'm thinking, I said, Lord, do I need to go? He said, no. You stay where you are. And the kids gathered around and they laid hands. And my daughter was telling me about the power she felt. Diane was telling me about the power she felt. Because God is moving through our babies. So I just lay hands on you representing the children of this house and we decree and declare that a greater glory is going to be upon y'all we decree and declare that you will move in the miracles the signs and the wonders of the lord we decree and declare that you will have encounters with jesus at an early age yeah, we decree and declare that you will shift generations and nations for the kingdom. What you say? Do you think you're going to do it? Yes. Can you say it louder? Yes. Yes. Because you're the bride of Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Get ready. I told her parents, so I'm just going to say it publicly about the healing anointing that's on her. And there's an importation. Because I know what God showed me when my husband passed and things that he was going to allow me to witness and, and miracles. That if I would just submit to him, that he was going to do some things. And that, that healing grace. And I told him, I said, you got to teach her about Catherine Coleman. Because watch, she's going to be used, not trying to wear Catherine's mantle. She has her on. But watch God move up on this child in a way that's going to bring such a shock and an awe to so many. Whew. God loves you and so do I. That's my girl. <laughs> Y'all, the conference has been so wonderful. I'm so glad, like Diane said. I'm so glad to be home. I'm so glad to be home. This is my friend. Y'all know this story. She liked to talk about my wig in Africa. I like to tell that. But I know this time I did. But I know. But Terry, I want to thank you. I want to thank you. Because when I didn't believe in me, you did. And Steve did. And Lynn did. And Debbie did. And when I wanted to just stay in my bubble you just kept bursting it poking pins in it but thank you and 
when you and Steve, when we all went to Africa and y'all told me, you're going to come to the house and you're going to preach in our church. And I thought, yeah, 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 I've heard that before. But you, you followed through. And then Steve says, I'm his girl. And for all these years, what, five, six, six or seven now, y'all have always stood with me, believed in me, supported me, encouraged me. And I thank you. And sometimes we don't always tell people. We wait till someone's done. Before we say things, but I want to publicly thank you for your love that has been so unconditional, without strings, and for accepting me and my family, my girl, and I can say thank you for praying me to Weatherford. <laughs> I have to tell you a story about Christy. <laughs> I'm not going to tell the wig story. <laughs> you, <laughs> uh, if you want to hear the wig story, you can ask Christy. <laughs> and she'll tell you the wig story. <laughs> I'm not telling it. <laughs> so uh, Christy moved to, from Texarkana to Little Elm. And the whole time when she moved, we were like, why is she moving to Little Elm? She, we know she's not supposed to be there. And so we would always say, what about Fort Worth? And she'd be like, I am moving to Fort Worth. And so ultimately it was her choice, you know, and God had to move her there for a season. But the whole time she was in Little Elm, I've been praying because I knew that we have an assignment we've had an assignment we still have an assignment now you get to partner with us in our assignment because one of our assignments is we're going to break down the racial walls in this city that is one of our assignments yeah. and you get to partner with us because the kingdom of heaven is multicultural and it's full of every race and creed and God loves everybody and so we get to partner with him and so I Christy I just love you you know she really is my family y'all she has a seat at my table she can come to my house anytime she wants and I can go to hers too but I usually call first so <laughs> Because sometimes she ain't home. She's shopping. <laughs> right, Kaylee? <laughs> and I love this girl over here. And wait till you get to know her voice. This woman can sing. But more than that, she's a treasure. And there's a lot that God's going to use her for. So I just want to thank you for coming. Thank you for being part of this weekend, and we absolutely love y'all and are excited to get to partner with you. I'm going to pray in just a second. When you leave, the roses are on the table. If you'll take a rose, everybody can take a rose. We want to remind you that your papa loves you. So pick a rose, and we're going to close in just a second. So, Lord, I thank you for your goodness. Thank you that you're a good Papa God. Thank you that you love us. And you not only do you love us, but you love us well and wherever we're at. And so, Lord, I pray for every woman here that you would seal everything that has been done this weekend, that you would seal it in their hearts. And, Lord, I pray that today would be a marker this weekend would be a marker moment in their life and that they're going to look back and say, that's when I stepped into my destiny. That's when I stepped into my identity. That's when I stepped into my healing. That's when I stepped into freedom. 
And so, Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you. We come before you with grateful hearts, and we just say thank you for all you've done. Thank you for your goodness. In Jesus' name, amen. Before you go, if you helped serve in any way this weekend, would you stand up? Can we just give them a round of applause? Thank you so much. And then can you thank our sound guys? Yes, we couldn't do it without them. Yes. Thank you, Sally. Thank you, Sally. We love you. A couple weeks ago, I'm going to tell you the story about Sally. Lori came to get her, to Brent, and she brought her up to the front. And when she walked by me, the Lord said, that's my girl. And so then she walked back by me, and he said, I want you to tell her she's my girl, and she's valuable. And so when she walked back by me, I did. I turned around, I went back there, and I said, the Lord said, that's my girl. And he told me to tell her, you have the right and to be able to climb up into my lap. And it's the same for all of y'all. You have the right to climb up into your papa's lap. So I want to challenge you. Just because you're grown doesn't mean you can't get in your papa's lap. And so get in there. Scooch in, like Bob Sorge says, and get in there tight and listen. So, you have anything, Debbie? So, I just feel like I wanted to share this one more little moment. About 12 years ago, the Lord uh, healed both of my elbows. I was at a conference, and there was just a season where they were just doing some praying, and, they, and the gentleman that was declaring some things. He said, I feel like somebody in the room, both of your elbows need to be healed. And I'm like, what are the chances of that? <laughs> Not the right or the left, but both. So I, look, I got up and I, I was at the very back of the room and I got up and I looked around. And I was like, is anybody going to claim that? Like, who, who's that for? And then the Holy Spirit said, that's for you. <laughs> and I went, it's for me? So I literally, I put my elbows up like this, and I said, I received that. Okay. Put my elbows down, and they just got hot. And I was like, ooh, what's that? I go to my friend who's, you know, she sees and feels Mary Jackson. I said, Mary, do my, do my elbows feel hot to you? She goes, no. I said, well, they, they're burning on fire. And I said, you can't feel that? No. So I said, okay, well, I received that. We go on our merry way. Get home. All of a sudden, uh, I felt a twinge in my elbow. And I'm like, oh, did I really not get healed? Because I had literally, for 10 years, squeezed my elbows from my, from my forearm all the way down. I would just find myself just squeezing because it was just painful all the time. And I heard him like I'm hearing you right now. He said, Debbie, you can live like this or you can live like this. It's your choice. I felt like the Lord needed you to hear that today. Diane, it's your choice. You can live with the doubt of, oh, that's not for me. I don't know. It didn't happen. Or you can declare, yes, it did. And you turn toward heaven and you say, thank you. I'm going to believe. I'm going to walk in it. I'm not going to live in the land of the lie any longer. So, Lord, thank you for the healing that you've done today. Thank you for the healing that has begun and that is going to continue. Thank you that we get to choose to believe your word. I pray a blessing over every single woman in this room. And I thank you for the plan and the purpose that you have, even for us touching each other's life, even in this very moment. It was your plan. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.